everywhere. We've been talking out of the book of Third John as a base. You don't have to go there, but Third John speaks in reference to the word of the Lord. When he made mention of, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. Be in health, even as your soul prosper. Now, we covered the first part of it. We say, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. And I want you to understand that, my God, your establishment comes first. You want establishment first before you want to hype on your prosperity. Your prosperity won't do you no good at all if you are not established. Mm -hmm. So we... We came to the conclusion in all of us to understand the word of the Lord that we need establishment first. Somebody say establishment first. Establishment then first. prosperity. Then oh, I know we read the word where it said, believe the Lord your God, so shall you what? Prosper. Believe the prophet, so shall you what? Be established. Be, uh, you prosper. Amen. So you be established. But believe the Lord your God, so shall you be what? Established. Establish. Then say believe his prophet, so shall you what? Prosper. prosper. So establishment comes first. We won't just hype on the word prosperity, like the money, the car, the jewelry, the whatever. Thank God for those things. But what do it profit a man to gain those things and, lose and then lose his soul? So we, amen, we have an understanding about your establishment comes first. In other words, some soundness about yourself. A foundation about yourself. There are some issues, some things that may be in your life that you want, my God, not to be part of what you call your prosperity. Because those things in your life is going to eat up your substance, it's going to eat up your gold, going to eat up your silver, going to eat up all that you call joyfulness. And before you know it, you'll be walking around with your head hung down, all tore up from the floor up because those things that's been attached to your life is like a canker worm and it's eating it all up. So I want to be sure I get all the crooked things straight. All those things that's not so pleasing and out. Yes, I want to have all those things that's not up to par. I want to be sure they're walking right, doing right, because I want those things to be in order. No, what's my say? Order. Order. So without things being in order, things in disarray, things in disorder, you can't function. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, the next part say, and be in what? Hell. Yeah. He was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Spiritually, so it makes it mention how man is being back in contact with God as sons and daughters. But on the physical end, I do believe in divine healing. I believe God can heal you, but every sickness, every disease, every infirmities, uh, whatever you experience in your body, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, no pressure at all, God can heal, God can deliver, God can change, God can turn it around. You ought to give somebody a high five and say, I am healed I am. by the power of God. Oh, come on, say it again. I am healed I am. by the power of God. Find somebody else, give them a high five and say, you are healed, you are healed, you are healed. So we extend, uh, understand and establish that you need to be healed by his word. Yes. Although I may have blood coming out my nose and hair may be falling off my head, my sleep may get up and leave me laying in the bed. But one thing I do know, I am healed. Yes. <laughs> it may look bad, it may feel bad, it may be bad, but I'm still saying out my mouth, things are not the same. Yes, there is a change. Why? Because I believe God and I know what prayer can do. And if I pray about it, it's going to happen. It's already done. I rebuke the enemy. I rebuke sickness. I rebuke death. I rebuke infirmity. Yes. Thank you, God. Mm. So I am healed. Somebody say, I am healed. I, am healed. Mm -hmm. I know we like to lay hands on other folk, but how about laying hands on your own self? How about telling that body of yours, you're going to line up now with a healer. <laughs> if I got to drag that leg to church, come on. If that leg want to go out and it paralyzed, if I got to drag it to the church, I'm going to drag it to the church. Come on. Whatever I got to do, it's gone. It's gone. Somebody say, it's gone, baby. It's gone. It's gone. If the eye want to blink, let it blink, let it blink. But you're going to church. <laughs> Woo! Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. <laughs> Somebody say, everybody going to church. Everybody. Come on, say it again. Say, everybody going to church. Huh? Yeah. Come on, say it one more time. Everybody going to church. You don't feel good, you gone. Had a hard time, you gone. Body aching, you gone. Mm -hmm. Me and my house, we going to church. <laughs> Woo! One stocking on, one stocking off, don't matter, we gone. Come on. And I told them once before, thank God, I'm past 50, I can wear white socks if I want to. 
<laughs> you will catch on the other wire. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> That's what I said. Mm -hmm. that, that devil tried to make a fool out you here. Yeah. Well, you can't find your shoe. Devil, I got good news for you. If I can wear a blue shoe and a white shoe, I'm going today. Uh-huh. I said, if I got to wear a tennis shoe, come on, and a boot. I'm going today. Come on, you ain't going to stop. You got to let that devil know, yeah, I'm a fool for Christ. <laughs> if I was a fool in the world, watch out now, y'all. If I done dumb and stupid stuff in the world, I'm going to let the devil know, set the record, sink or swim, huh? do or die. My mind's made up. Huh? My heart is fixed. Somebody shout glory. Well, you know, I was going to church today, but I, I just couldn't find my curls. So I couldn't do my hair. Nappy or not, I'm gone. <laughs> if I got a fried die, lay to the side, tied in a boat, it don't matter. Somebody say, I'm gone. Y'all ain't talking in here. Somebody say, I'm gone. <laughs> Come on. So uh, when you went to the club, it didn't matter, did it? Mm, went to the club any kind of way. It didn't matter what, how you look when you went to the club. Shall I get my drink on? Well, I'm going anyhow. Praise the Lord. When we get on the Lord's side, we get educated. We get sense in our head. Yeah, I understand. Uh -huh. Then the last one is we talked about is even as thy soul prosper. Open your Bible to the book of Second King, the second chapter, and verse seven. Second King two. And seven. Understand that thou this the word of the Lord. What does it say? Second King two and seven. Read first lady. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets uh -huh. went. Mm -hmm. Read. And stood to view afar off. And stood to view afar off. In other words, this is Elijah and Elisha is walking together. They have already uh, stopped at two locales because they, the prophets knew that Elijah was about to be taken out of the company of Elisha and the company of the people. Simply mean he's about ready to be stretched up out of the earth by the power of God. Read. And they too stood by Jordan. Uh huh, stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle uh -huh. and wrapped it together. He wrapped the mantle together. And smote the waters. He smote the waters. And they were divided hither and thither. And the waters were divided hither and thither. So that they too went over on dry they ground. They too went over on dry ground. Elijah and Elisha read. And it came to pass. Uh huh. When they were gone over. When they was gone over, read. That Elijah said unto Elisha. Elijah, watch this word real close, said it to Elisha. Ask what I shall do for thee. Ask what I shall do for you. Tell your neighbor that's a reward. There's a reward. In serving the king. In serving the king. Read the book. Before I be taken away from thee. Before I be taken away from thee. Now go back to to verse 6 and just read verse 6 and Elisha said unto him and Elisha said unto him Terry I pray thee here stay here on this side of the Jordan read for the Lord had sent me to Jordan for the Lord has sent me to Jordan and he said mm -hmm. as the Lord liveth as the Lord live and as thy soul liveth as you live I will not leave thee. I will not leave you. You hear that word? In other words, anointing come through transference. Thank you, God. And Elisha realized and recognized if I hang with this anointing, there's a transfer that will take place. Nah, come on. Now, Elijah tried to give Elisha the slip. Mm. Woo, watch out now, y'all. Huh? One day you're trying to fool him or trick him, but you got to see and understand how bad do you want it. All right. So Elijah told him, Elisha, stay here on this side of the Jordan. That's very important. Remember that. Stay here on this side of the Jordan. And Elisha said, oh, no, I can't do that. Come on. He experienced that two times already and followed the man of God in those two hurdles. And now he had the third hurdle. He said, I, I can't do it. As you live, I'm going to hang with you. Read the book. Going back down to where you left off at. What shall I do thee before I be taken away from what thee? What you want me to do for you before I am taken away from you? Read it. And Elisha said. Elisha said, I'm going after something. Read it. I pray thee. 
Yes. Let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. You ought to hang around the ministry long enough to say, I want a double portion of that. Yeah. Huh. I, I don't want just a regular portion. I want a double portion. Huh. How many of y'all ever went to a place of good eating? My God, when you bit down into it, you think to yourself, I got to have another bite of that. Mm. Mm-hmm. Come on, you already had your regular portion, but you're sitting there with your eyes all gleaming. Yeah, waiting on another portion and not waiting on the summertime to roll around. You catch me with a while. Uh, but I want a portion. I want a double portion. Somebody say a double portion, a double portion, a double portion. I don't want the regular. I don't want the usual. I want a double portion. I want to walk in some power. It's an authority. It's an anointing. Somebody shout double, 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 double. Mm, read the book. And he said, Read. Thou hast asked a hard thing. Now you ask a hard thing, not a difficult thing or an impossible thing, but you ask a what? Hard thing. Mm. How many of y'all know that right now you are doing some hard thing? But I know if I hang in there, God gonna bless me. If I know if I stand my ground, God gonna bring me out. If I know if I keep on praising Him, He gonna do it for me. It's a hard thing, and sometimes you are caught between a rock and a hard place, and that's how God gonna bless you in a hard. It's a hard thing, but not a difficult thing. It's a hard thing, but not an impossible thing. Read the book. Watch what we say. Nevertheless, uh-huh. if thou see me when I am taken from thee. If you see me. See, the transference comes in you being alert. Mm-hmm. The transference comes in you being present. The transference comes in when you are watching as well as praying. Mm. Come on. Huh? There are people right now mm-hmm, that, that God wants to transfer of this anointing upon their life, but they can't seem to come to grips to be present. Mm-hmm. Come on. They can't seem to come to grip to stay focused. All right. So they will miss it every time. Huh? So he said to him, uh huh, that I will give to you, or I will allow this thing to transpire. I will let this thing happen if you are able to see it. Read. It shall if thou see me when I'm taken away from thee, read a book. It shall be so unto thee. It's gonna be so. But if not, I'm it shall release. not be so. This is anointing unto you. And if you don't see it, you won't get it. It's just that simple. Just that simple. If you see it, it's yours. If you don't see it, you won't get it. A whole lot of folks sitting right now is not going to see it. Amen. And I don't just mean right here, right now, but uh, uh, it, it just generally speaking, they see it and they're going to get it. Some is not going to see it, and they're going to miss it. How can I be present and not see it? Remember the, the scripture talking about the ten version, five wide, five foolish? I done been up all night long. You mean to tell me I'm going to miss it now? Hmm. All right. Thank God for DVRs and all other kind of recording devices that you can record programs. Because some of y'all from old school day, you was up all night waiting on your favorite program to come on. You went through all the commercials. You ate up all the popcorn, drank up all the Pepsi and the Cokes. You sat there. You didn't play. You took up the baby. You come on. You didn't play with one another. And when the program come on, when they get through showing you the very intro of the program, the next thing happens. Like, hmm. An hour and a half, two hours later, you wake up at the very end and they start playing the music. What happened? (laughs) You just spent all this time waiting. And now when they come on, you don't even see nothing of the program. Mm. But in today's time, we got recorded advice that you can record it. But I remember them days, you missed good programs you wanted to see. Mm -hmm. And when the time for it to be seen, you was nowhere near conscious Mm. out of it. I mean, in a deep sleep. Didn't wake up when the guns was being fired. <laughs> Didn't wake up when the dog was barking. I wish I had to, when the salary was gone. Didn't wake up on no part when it was going off. That soft, still music was going off. He ride off in the sunset on the horse. You wake up there, Where, where's he going? <laughs> he didn't miss everything. <laughs> Read the book, what it say. And it came to pass. And it came to pass. As they still went on. As they talked, still went on. Come on, read. And taught that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire. There appeared a chariot of fire. And horses of fire. And horses of fire. And parted them both asunder. And split them, separated them. Read. And Elijah 
went up by a whirlwind now, into heaven. Now, you got to understand, when you start walking in this thing called the anointing, it will separate you from gossiping folks. When you start walking in this anointing, it will separate you from junky folks. Come on, y'all. When you start walking in the power and the dunamis of God, even as thy soul shall prosper. Come on. You can't walk hand in hand with the world. At the same time, walk hand in hand with the anointing. Yeah. The anointing itself will separate you from very friend, chief of friend, family members sometimes. Come on, because I want to be more like him. In other words, you are taking on light and light and darkness don't have no fellowship. We keep trying to please those in darkness, keep, trying to hang, keep them hanging around us, and their light is so dim until you're not careful, it's going to dim your light. So the light that you have, that you have to present, is bright enough to win and to draw and to show them the ways of God without you adopting their way, but you have to understand that the very notion of God will separate you. You can try to figure out why all my friends are gone. I don't have no friends. It's not because of you, beloved. It's because of the anointing. They don't want the power of God. The power of God is going to drive it. The power of God is going to push it aside. You ain't fooling about that foolishness. You ain't entertaining all those sad stories. Your mind is made up. You're saying things like, I am the head and not the tail. I am blessed and not cursed. I am delivered and not power. And they are walking in bondage talking about, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. I know what I'm going to do. And what I'm going to do is what I've done the last time. I praise him, I rejoice, I clap, I shout. Thank you, Lord God. If he done it then, yes. he gonna do it now. And they don't understand that. You just dumb, you just crazy, you just stupid. Call me what you want to come, but he that shall come will come. And my confidence is in him. He won't leave me, nor forsake me. He's there all the time. Somebody say all the time, all the time, all the time. Lean over, tell your neighbor he's here right now. Read the book, what it say? I'm almost through. And Elisha saw it and cried, uh -huh. My father, my father. Yes. The chariot of Israel. Read the book. I'm the horseman thereof. And the horseman thereof. And he saw him no more. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes uh -huh. and rent them in two pieces. Now, 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 now. Keep on reading. Read, read, read. Get good. And he took up also the mantle of Elisha now, that here fell go. from him. Now, here you go. Here you go. Elisha saw it, didn't he? He even said out his mouth, oh, look at what's happening here. Look at all this was going on. He even took of the mantle. He even wrapped himself. But the question is, did he get what he want? Mm, it's going to get real good. The real test is not because you have the mantle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The real test is not because he saw him being taken up. Hmm. The real test is not that it split the two of them. Come on. But let's get to the real test. Here come the real test. Read it. Mm -hmm. And and went read. Went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And went back. Remember that where I said we can walk back there. Went back and stood by where? The bank of Jordan. The bank of Jordan. Read. And he took the mantle from Elijah. And he took the mantle and that, what? That fell from him uh -huh. and smote the water. And smote and, the water. And said. And said. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Where is the Lord God of Elijah? In other words, my God, the true pudding, I mean, the true test in the pudding is the spirit of that river Jordan. In other words, they got across that Jordan and they had to go back across that Jordan. Elijah spit the Jordan. Now it's Elijah's time to spit that Jordan. The power is in the demonstration. You got to demonstrate the dunamis of God. Thank Even you. that your soul may prosper. You got to demonstrate the power of God. After you receive the Holy Ghost, you shall receive power. Not the ability to talk in tongues only. And not just witnessing only. But power to cast the devil out. Power to lay hands on the sick. Power to make the devil lose your money. Power to lose your mind. Lose your body. Lose your home. Somebody say power, 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 power. Somebody jump your feet and shout. Power. Power. I got the Holy Ghost power. So I say Holy Ghost power. You ought to tell your neighbor power, 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 power. Oh God. He said, Where is the God of Elijah? Elijah was the one who spit that Jordan first time. Hey, thank you, Lord. 
and it went over on dry ground. Tell your neighbor, you got to get back across that Jordan. Woo! Come on, tell him again. You got to get back across that Jordan. Come on, tell him again. You got to get back across that Jordan. There's a miracle on the other side of your Jordan. There's a blessing on the other side of your Jordan. There's an assignment on the other side of your Jordan. Elijah's assignment was on the other side of that Jordan. And not at the place of transference. Once you receive that transference, you got to move into that place of your assignment. And Elijah was taken. Mm -hmm. Elisha was now faced with Jordan. Yes. Mm -hmm. What you going to do when you come to your Jordan? Okay. Read the book. What it says. I got to call a quiz. And when he also had smitten the water. When he also had smitten the water. Here's part two to it. They parted hither and thither. Yes, yes. And Elisha went over. Uh-huh. And when the sons of the prophets, which were at, to view at Jericho, saw him. Now, that's the part. That's the second part. See, you may know that God is with you. You may know that God is using you. But it's not complete. Whew, read the book. They said, they said, the spirit of Elijah, the spirit of Elijah, does rest on Ooh, Elijah. Somebody gotta see this God on the inside of you. <laughs> somebody gotta see what you're talking about. Somebody gotta witness what you're testifying to. Yes, I know He's real. I see it in you. Look where the Lord brought me from. Brought me out of darkness. Brought me out of sin. Brought me out of shame. Look, 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 look. Somebody's got to testify. Because you know, you ain't saved until you pass the test of your family. <laughs> Everybody else know you saved. But mama got to say you saved. Y'all ain't saying that. <laughs> Come on. Everybody else know you saved. All the folks in the church know you saved. Yeah, child, she got she was talking in tongue. The Lord mop her up and down the aisle. She just talking to tongue for three or four hours. She oh yeah, she laid hand. Oh, she prophesied. Everybody know you saved, but folks at home. Come on, Cause you left home, you was a cusser. Mm, Y'all ain't saying that. <laughs> Come on, when you left home, you was an old liar. Come on. So when mama and daddy and brother and cousin and big mo and little Joe, all them see that how you are standing up, how you are holding on, how you are enduring. By now, they should be hitting the crack pipe. Y'all say, by now, they should be out in the street doing all kind of freaky things. But they're still in the church. They are praising God. They are the one that's going to declare that you are saved. In other words, you got to have a witness. Everybody stand.